Insulin is a hormone that is produced from the beta cells of the pancreas. Now, insulin is a small hormone. Uh, physically speaking, the molecule is very, very tiny, which makes it somewhat, in the past, complicated for scientists to measure. Also complicating it is the actual amount of insulin we have in our bodies. Insulin is at fantastically low levels compared to other hormones, and yet it is fantastically effective. A little bit of insulin goes a long way. It punches well above its weight class. Now, the primary stimulus for insulin to be released is glucose. As blood sugar levels or blood glucose is going up, insulin will be released. This is the most famous interaction with insulin. No surprise that its primary mechanism or action is to lower glucose. Now, I'm even misspeaking a little bit as I'm saying that. I don't like to say that it's it's that, that the lowering of the glucose is insulin's is it, its primary action. It is its most famous action. But that is almost part of the problem, as I'll change the paradigm in a moment. People can't separate insulin from glucose. Whereas glucose is, yes, a stimulus and an effect, insulin does many, many more things. It doesn't matter what the nutrient is, insulin has a powerful effect on what the body is doing with it. Indeed, one of insulin's thematic effects across the entire body is to tell cells what to do with energy. If, if you, cannot shrink, you cannot lose fat um, if insulin is low, or that body fat is directly contributed or, or affected by insulin. It is impossible to make a fat cell grow without elevated insulin. Also, it has effects on cellular growth in a very general way. It has effects on electrolytes in a very important way, and many, many more effects. But again, the theme of it is telling cells what to do with energy. <clears throat> and the fact that it lowers glucose, well, that's just one of its many effects, um, it, and albeit its most famous. And now we understand what insulin is. We need to understand now what happens when it breaks bad, when it turns into the villain. And so that's what we'll define now. To understand insulin resistance, we want to understand it from the level of the cell. Because when we say insulin resistance, that is a cellular phenomenon. And this could be any cell in the entire body. It doesn't matter, because every cell of the body has a little door for insulin to come and knock on, called the insulin receptor. I mean, literally, every cell of the body has an insulin receptor. From brain cells to bone cells, lung cells to liver cells, and all the cells in between, insulin will come and tell the cell to do something. Insulin will come and knock on the door of the cell, and in so doing will elicit a cellular action. And I'm, going to, I'm just going to call it action and keep it a little vague because it's no surprise what insulin does at a neuron is very different from what it does at, a, at, a, at an endothelial cell within the blood vessel. And its most famous action, again, is to lower blood glucose. And it does so by when it, insulin comes and knocks on the door, it will open another door for glucose to come in. Now, not all of the body's cells will do that, but some of the biggest ones, like muscle cells, um, will. 